intro. <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm Bryn Sandberg and welcome to First Look. <laughs> we have today here the cast and producers of Amazon's new drama, Sneaky Pete. We have Margot Martindale, Giovanni wow. Ravisi, Marin Ireland, Brian Cranston, and Graham Yost. Brian, you co-created the drama with uh, David Shore, who mm -hmm. created House. Why don't you just tell us how you came up with the idea, how did that process sort of get started? It was really quite by accident. I, I was very fortunate to be on the stage at the Emmys giving an acceptance speech. <laughs> and I wanted to, to just kind of reach out to share how appreciative I was of that experience. And so extemporaneously, I just wanted to say, uh, when I was a, a t young teen, I was kind of aimless. And my own family gave me the nickname of Sneaky Pete because I was always looking for a shortcut in my responsibilities and, and accountabilities. And, and uh, I was really kind of a, a tricky little kid uh, working through a very challenging childhood. So, okay, I didn't find my passion until I was a, about 22 years old, cumulatively, and when I decided to be an actor. So to all of you, uh, you know, I, I hope that you reintroduce yourselves to, I'm looking up like I'm looking at this, it's like, all, <laughs> all of you in the audience here. In the um, firmament. <laughs> thank you Listen so much for me. this. It's the audience. fantastic. Hello? Uh, <laughs> Is this the and, and, you know, reintroduce yourself to that thing that gave you joy mm -hmm. or, or discover it yourself. It's never too late, and I mm -hmm. hope you do, and thank you very much. That was it. Mm -hmm. um, the next day, I get a call from Zach Van Amberg, who's one of the pr uh, presidents of Sony TV. He said, congratulations. And uh, I think there's a series in there, in Sneaky Pete. And I said, you do? What, what is it? He goes, oh, I don't know. <laughs> he goes, but what if your teenage Sneaky Pete never grew out of it as you did? What if he became a 37-year-old man still being that guy looking for the shortcut, mm -hmm. not owning up to responsibilities and things, what would he be? And so with that nugget of information, I kind of went, that is very interesting. Well, I think he would probably be a criminal. Mm -hmm. And from there on, David Shore and I crafted this concept of a man becoming this con artist, and it grew from there. Confidence, man. And I give people confidence, they give me their money. Hi, Grandma, Grandpa. It's me, Pete. Giovanni, for you, were you just itching to play a con artist? What 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 attracted you to this role? Um, I, I don't know if I was necessarily itch, itching to play a con artist as much as uh, getting a script that was really good and 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 having an opportunity to work with. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite actors in any capacity. I jumped at it, yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and the show had a little bit of a journey to the screen, right? It wasn't, <laughs> <A little bit. laughs> wasn't a quick process. A little bit. Yeah. Um, so you want to talk a little bit about that, Brian, because it was sure. originally at CBS, right? Uh, we originally sold the project to CBS, and mm -hmm. we actually shot the pilot. Mm -hmm. um, Giovanni was our pick, and once we got him on board, we went after the rest of the cast. And my mandate, which didn't have any pressure from the, from the network or studio, that, that they were on board with hiring, just focus on the best actors and let them do their work. And I'm fortunate enough to, to say, honestly, that everyone was our first choice that we got. We were hoping that we could close these deals with these actors and 100% came through. So we're very lucky. The experience with CBS was uh, a, a very interesting one, you know. Um, <laughs> All right. I, I do think ultimately Nina Tassler, I think she was very supportive mm -hmm. and very helpful. Um, I think deep down when they decided not to pick up the pilot, I think she was truly upset about it. But um, that's, the, that's the tough thing about the business is not, it, it may not have suited them. They know best their business. Um, so instead of taking that loss on the chin and sitting back down, Zach and the team from Sony contacted us and said, we're taking it out. And Amazon saw it quickly, right away, within three days, and said, we'd like this, uh, retool it somewhat to fit our idea of what our concepts are. And um, so we did. We, we rewrote a, a few things within 
the, the show. We had a different ending to it. And it went out under the Amazon model mm -hmm. where they have the, the whole world yeah, vote process. on it. And it was the highest rated um, Amazon show ever. So amazing, amazing. we were fortunate to get the pickup. I didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> Did you actually reshoot the pilot or just, just parts of it? Parts of it. Parts of it, okay. Yeah, so in other words, uh, uh, it, was, it was basically a procedural when mm. it was with CBS. Mm -hmm. When that fell through, we were able then to transform the storyline into a serialized show. And that took a lot of effort and some very fine tuning. And then once Graham Yost came on board, it, it went full hog into that. Area. And I don't say hog because you're here, <laughs> but he was a hog farmer when he was a young boy. Oh, I thought you were um, talking about his weight. Wait, you're sorry. talking about that other photograph right. that was in this chair. Right there. Chubby no, right there. I didn't want to say anything about the weight. You did. <laughs> sorry. I didn't. Right. Um, no, so it, it worked yeah. out well. I feel so alone right now. <laughs> Well, and I'm curious for, for the actors, you guys thought that you were joining a, a, a broadcast procedural, right? Did that change anything about? how you played your characters? Well, I, I think that uh, the writing changed. Uh, the characters were the same, and then the characters took a different journey. And I think that, uh, I mean, we all were the same people. Mm. You know, the, the caper part of it with those two, you know, I wasn't interested in. So, uh, <laughs> me, me, me. <laughs> B story. Uh, no, I think that, I think that, uh, what we gained was a, a whole new world, mm -hmm. which was great mm -hmm. and so mm -hmm. much fun. The only, I mean, the thing that for me that was the biggest change was that in the ori original sort of conception of the show, me and Giovanni were kind of running around hunting down bad guys and stuff like that. So in the new version of the show, our journeys were a lot more separate to sort of delay the two of us, I think, ultimately coming together to sort of work together in some way down the line, hopefully. But that was something that was uh, the biggest change. But ultimately, I think we were all really excited about um, the level of freedom that the story could take and and being able to focus on developing the characters and, and adding more layers of complication and letting the pacing dictate itself. You know, some episodes could be slower than others, whatever. Different storylines could take on different levels of importance we didn't have to adhere to. Uh, a much more rigorous kind of plot structure mm -hmm. along the way, which mm -hmm. I think we were all excited about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to do a more serialized show. And Graham, for you, you came in as the, the new showrunner. Brian and I had, had lunch in Culver City, and he told me about Sneaky Pete, which I'd known about. A couple of writers, one from Justified, another one I've been tracking for years, who've been working on it. And um, they said, you know, would you, would you come in? And David Shore didn't want to stay with the show. And so, um, fellow Canadian, we had to have lunch and work that out because Canadians have to do that. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we, I decided, yeah, I'd come aboard. And one of the big things was simply this and this. Brian and I, this, this. <laughs> Brian and I worked together on From the Earth to the Moon. And, uh, 20 years 20 ago. 20 years ago. Yeah. And he played Buzz Aldrin. And we were marking on the set. I said, Brian, the last time I wrote a line for you, it was... Neil, we need to talk about who gets out on the moon first. Um, that was a long time ago. Yeah. But um, it was really, you know, I, we had a, such a great time doing Justified. But boy, it's hard to assemble a cast that's that good. And you don't know if it's going to work. And here is a show where we're given this incredible cast. It's all done. Half of the work is done in a way. Um, and I love the concept. And it was fun to work with, with Brian and James and... Not half of the work, but a big, okay. <laughs> a big, a big part of the, the alchemy had already come together. There was this chemistry, seeing them work together, seeing those two work, seeing, you know, all of that was just, okay, there's something really interesting we can do here. And then also given the, uh, the encouragement and really the instruction by Amazon, let this be a serialized binging show. Um, we knew we had to come up with a story that would last 10 hours. And so we thought the pilot was wonderful, but one of the greatest things about the pilot is at the end of it, when they did the reshoots for, uh, for Amazon, we've got you know, this new bad guy we see in the flesh played by my old friend Brian Cranston, playing Vince, saying to Marius, if you don't get me the money, I'm gonna start cutting off your brother's fingers. Well, that's a fantastic engine for a show. I'm gonna take your brother's hand and I'm gonna snip off a finger. Pretty soon I'm gonna run out of fingers. 
There's a fox coming into our house, taking a claim to what isn't his. We know that he's got to try and make money. He's got to make $100,000 in a week. He's pretending to be someone he isn't. You know, then we've got this other thing where Margot, playing the character of Audrey, says basically to him, I think you're a fox in the hen house, and I don't trust you. And so at the end of the pilot, we felt, okay, we can see roughly where this could go at least. Mm -hmm. And working with Fred and Michael and Ben and the other writers, it was, it was fun to try and take this box of things and say, okay, we're gonna make the rest of the show out of that. And you were just boxes, a box, box of things. things. You're like things in a box. Butter, like in the attic. You know, somewhere. you're like yeah. props. Just yeah. meat props. Well, and I'm sure there was a healthy amount of pressure on you after the success of Justified and the Americans. Was there anything else that just made this the right follow-up project for you? Um, what really sold you? Free two-day shipping. You know, it's Amazon Prime. You get that. That's good. That was his whole motivation for doing the it. show. Um, <laughs> No, it's my standard. But the uh, pressure, yes, but there's always pressure. You know, you're trying to do a television show, and it's sort of what, what's going to be enjoyable to work on? What are, what are themes that you can really sort of dig into? And the whole question of identity and how we all pretend in our lives, there's a part that I'm playing right now as being this showrunner, being interviewed. Um, you know, and I, and I do an okay job. <laughs> I'm almost lifelike. But um, this family... Audrey and Julie and the other people in the family, I think there's other stuff going on. That the Norman Rockwell family is just a facade. They've all got their secrets. They've got their own stories. And let's find out what's going on there. So this guy comes in thinking he's found a safe home to pretend to be someone else. Mm -hmm. He can lie low. And he's stepped into something that's now going to oh, take up field. half he's of his time. He's the hen in the fox house. Yeah, yeah, exactly. He's the, <laughs> end in the hen in the fox house. Mm -hmm. That's why we made it grandparents as opposed to parents. Because I thought... It's too close. I think the parent would know. Parents, just too close. If there's well, especially a, once the, the kid left. Especially when as young as 10. And, that's yeah, right. That's right. Oh, don't do the math. Child, the you, math makes yeah, no please sense on the ages. But. <laughs> it don't pull that thread. Yeah, it does. I, I've you, worked it out. You were a child bro. Right. I've made it OK. You made it OK. <laughs> you had your first child when you were 12. And uh, it's Well, and Margo, you play Pete's grandmother in the show. You're sort of on to, to Marius. You think that maybe he's not quite who he says he is. Is that? Well, here's the thing. He shows up. I don't know who he is, meaning he says he's our grandson. I don't know what he's been doing. So I don't know really who this so-called grandson has turned into. We can take it from there. Right. And then, you know, maybe there's more to what I think. Of course, that hasn't been revealed to me yet by Graham Yost, <laughs> but uh, uh, <laughs> I'm sure I'm sure it will. It's fun because my character Audrey is a very, very, very distrustful, suspicious mm -hmm. uh, person, and very, very perceptive, and is always looking out for the lie, the con, the whatever. Well, there's the sense of having worked in bail bonds this many years that it just doesn't believe people when they say, well, I'll be at the court. You can guarantee it. I'm not going to put any, you know, I'm not going to yeah. give you any money really? for my bail. She thinks she can really figure out what people are up to. What we find out in the course of the season is that Audrey has her own blind spot and she makes her own mistake. Mm -hmm. And one of the keys to cons working is that people want to believe. So someone comes in, they want, especially... Uh, Peter Garrity, who plays Otto, uh, her husband, he wants to believe that it's Pete. He wants to believe that the family is happy and back together again. Everyone wants to believe that. That's one of the things that cons do, is they fill that need. But yeah, things turn for her, things turn for her. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, we get a great bad guy for the season. Mm -hmm. Or longer. Or longer. I, I was gonna ask Brian, were you always going to act in this? Or was that a decision that you made? I was once waiting the was for answered? Giovanni to stumble. And I was like, I would do a tap out. I got to be a kid. I got to be a kid. Thanks, kid. Uh, you have enough for me. Uh, uh, no, I, I, it no. wasn't. It wasn't my intention at all. Um, when we got the mandate from Amazon to uh, refresh the series in a in a serialized manner and to infuse it with some new energy. We had literally three weeks to do that in, to complete it and turn it back in. So we had yeah. no time. Yeah. And so we had to quickly put this scene together, a couple scenes at the end together so fast. Mm -hmm. And we had to f find the Vince. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. It, I think it was, mm-hmm. you know, sometimes the, the stars align <laughs> and it was like, well, maybe I'm, I'm just in the way if I, no, 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 no. So let's do this. Uh, it, it, it was a character that was right for me that was, it, so let's do it. And mm-hmm. if it helps in any way, I'm all for that wearing my producer hat, right? <laughs> so uh, we did it and we had fun. And I wanted Graham to know that wherever he wants to go with this, I'll, I'll follow. So even going into the episodes, going into the first day of shooting, I had no idea if I was going to be in every episode, every other episode, how long it will last, will I get killed off, will I go away, will I come back, I don't know. And, and it turns out that it, it became this kind of involved thing, which I'm very happy to be a part of. And if we are able to get a second season out of it, it may continue, it <laughs> depends on how all things work themselves out. Mm-hmm. Well, what is it like to juggle those different roles, though, as an executive producer and an actor in the same project? And he directed yeah, an episode. And, and, and directed. you directed. So what is it like to wear all those it, hats? The snarky uh, answer is that it's, well, it's all about narcissism. <laughs> um, but but the, truly, it, it's like, it's all related storytelling. They're all sisters to each other, you know, the writer, the director, the actor, the producer. In this, we tried to make it smooth. So I crossed over many times and talking with the actors, um, going into the writer's room, you know, infusing some ideas, even though I was instrumental in hiring Graham Yost, I was hiring my boss, which is a very interesting concept. (laughs) Hire someone Mm -hmm. to be your boss. So I never had that that experience Very before. Very strange. And boy, was that a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I told him, I said, I completely believe in, in, in the collaborative process. So throughout this process, my whole intention was to try to poke holes in our boat. Because if I felt I could do it, then so can critics and so will audience members. They may not know why they're not liking what they're seeing, but it, it's got to be good. Let's, let's keep going, keep going, keep going. So I would write copious notes. We'd have in, in-person meetings and things like that. Um, in, in the most... <laughs> oh, sorry. No, that's fine. I'm fine. Part, I'm fine. For the I'm most fine. part, we, we agreed on, on the majority of things. But I, I didn't have any idea that we would agree with everything. That would be silly to assume that. So I would passionately make my statement and then walk away. Mm -hmm. I love the collaborative process. As much as I may bitch and moan about it, um, my first response to notes from anyone is, these are the stupidest notes I've ever received in my life. I hate these notes, I hate these people, I hate life, I'm gonna go back to the farm. (laughs) I was not a hog farmer, but anyway, yeah. And uh, then the next day it's kind of like, you know what, there's a few of them aren't bad. And then after three days, it's, yeah, yeah this, even this one I would never answer. It's like, yeah, no, they're right there too. So it take, it's a process though. And, and uh, it's just being open to that process and having great writers. How'd you get away? Richard took the dog for a walk. I went out the window, but look, I'm on a cordless and I'm gonna lose signal. Where do you want to meet? Do they know you're gone? No, not yet. Go back. What did you say, go back? Eddie, go back before they know you're gone. No, I can't do that, Mary's the already sick of dog on me. I broke my nose, man. Eddie, that's exactly what I'm talking about. You've got to go back. Look, I'm going to get you out of this, okay? I'm, I'm, I'm close on the money. For Marin, you, you've been in some twisty shows before. I'm curious, how much do you like to know about what's coming for your character, and how much do they tell you? <laughs> <laughs> um, I, you know, I actually really enjoy, uh, maybe as perverse as it sounds, I really enjoy the, the element of television where you don't, know what mm-hmm. you're going to get to do next week. I, I love the thing of, of opening the script and, and that excitement of like, what, of what do I get to do now? And finding it hopefully is some new little annex of my character I didn't know existed that never did exist before somebody in the writer's room figured it out or had the idea to do it. I, I love that the character continues to grow and develop and that it, it isn't a finite thing that, that kind of um, you're just walking around in one little room for mm-hmm. years at a time. I love that. I, I really get excited about that. I mean, but I, in a lot of, in other shows too, it's very similar. It's yeah. rare that you actually get to know a lot for what happens in, in the, the season finale. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> or even you know two episodes from from then, and and that's part of the the thrill of of I think of this kind of work mm-hmm. in particular, mm-hmm. as opposed to doing a film or something where you already know the ending. Mm-hmm. It's really fun. Sure, and and for Brian and Grimm, you've both worked on shows in the past that sort of revolve around 
con men and crime and, and deception. I'm curious, how did you set out to make this different from Breaking from Bad Malcolm and Justified? From Malcolm in the Middle? Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I mean, every, it, the, every element of a, of a show has its own fingerprint. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and we wanted that. We wanted to make it its own identity. We are, however, a product of our own experience. And I think we naturally, as human beings, take our experiences, the good things of uh, experiences or things we may have learned in our previous relationship and say, okay, I'm gonna correct this and hopefully it'll be better this time or whatever. And, and you, you do, you borrow the, the things that really worked well in your experiences and you say, I wanna infuse this construct with this, you know, and how does this work with you? And Graham has the same ethic, you know, and, and we bring it together and make it work. Mm-hmm. You know? And a lot has to do with personalities. Are these people, do we really wanna be here? Are we really trying, are we putting in the hours of putting in the work to, to contemplate these things? And, and sometimes agonize over the decisions and, mm-hmm. and things. And it's, it, it, ultimately, it's, it's very satisfying. But um, there is artistic frustration that's built in inherently in this business. Mm-hmm. And what about you, Graham? Any, any thoughts? Well, on again, the, one of the things that appealed to me was doing a con artist show. And I love movies like The Staying, uh, even more recently, uh, Will Smith's film Focus, which was mm-hmm. a fun con movie. Um, the difference is when I saw The Sting when I was... 13 or whatever, that dates me, oh my God. Um, I didn't realize that I was being conned and I wasn't yet a writer. So now when I see a con movie, I'm going, what are they doing here? Why did they show that? Why was that little character? Why did he come in? What, you know, so I'm always thinking now, but the audience loves to be fooled and they also want to be in on the trick at the same time. Right. And it's an interesting thing to try to figure out. So there were choices that we made, certain characters, oh, it's not gonna be that guy, it's gonna be this guy. Well, can we go back and reshoot that scene? No, we can't. Well, (laughs) then what can we do? And figuring that stuff out to make the whole con of it work, and it was very, very challenging. But again, you have a room full of really smart people. You got Brian and his partner, James. You've got these great actors who are asking really good questions. I'm saying that now for the camera. Um, (laughs) Really great, incessant. Really incessant, (laughs) nonstop questions. No, they they were great. Honestly, a lot of it was, and Margot gives me crap because um, when we worked on Justified, I forgot to tell her that her character was dying off in the last episode. <laughs> and so oh, she's no. still, for on my screensaver on my computer for a year was Margot doing this to me. <laughs> and um, so giving actors a heads up of where they're going. For, for some of it, it's like, we don't know exactly where, but Julia is roughly gonna have this arc. Marius is rough, we're thinking this is our goal for the end of the season. We want to get this answered and that answered. Audrey and Otto, we want to find out what Audrey has done. But I'm not always best because we're in the midst of it, the thick of it, and it's also, we're writing in LA and shooting in New York. There were some communications breakdowns where people didn't know where their characters were going. And it's like, whoever the writer was on the set, it's like, you got to go talk to them now, tell them it's all going to be okay. Um, And then it wasn't. No. (laughs) (laughs) In terms of uh, TV's anti-heroes, Walter White uh, is one of the more prominent ones that comes to mind for most people, I think. I'm curious, Giovanni, do you consider Marius to be an anti-hero? I guess in the the technical definition or the concept that we have for for anti-hero, yeah, but I I, I guess I wouldn't really approach it like that, you know? I think that's, it's obvious, yeah. Um, But I think that at the end of the day, for me, what I would, be concentrating on is, is really just sort of the objective, which in the show, and I think as we know in the, in the pilot, is really to extricate my my brother, uh, Eddie, who's portrayed by Michael Dreyer mm-hmm. from the claws of Vince. And it was really always amazing every time we'd get a new new episode, you know, how how complicated they would make the, the, the situation. So yeah, I think it was that, but as far as like anti-hero, I, I, you know, I think it's just looking at what, what, the, what the character needed to do or what his agenda was at that moment. Mm-hmm. And Margot, do you have any thoughts on that too? How do you see the Marius? You, do you see him as I a love, bad guy? I or? love Giovanni. I just think he's <laughs> so <love> lovable. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, do I see him as a bad guy? Yeah. I, I have so. grown to care deeply about him. Hmm. Well, thank you. I still don't really know what he's up to. Uh, And I still don't know who he really is. Mm -hmm. But I don't want him to go. 
And also, I need help. Mm-hmm. You need somebody to help you with the I, family business, right? I need right? some help. <laughs> and he seemed to know some things that I was interested in. <laughs> <laughs> He's got some tricks up his yeah. sleeve. Yeah. Yep. Um, I'm curious if, if the show lends itself to binge viewing. I, yeah, binge viewing, binge eating, all sorts <laughs> of binge. Any binging. Any binging. Uh, <laughs> binge, yeah. Do you prefer viewers to savor it? Or is it their I, choice? What do you? Yeah, exactly. I think this is one of the fun things about the streaming show is that I'm going to watch two. I'm going to watch three. I'm going to watch one. I'll, four days later, I'm going to see another one. Whatever you choose to do, I think that it is more of a condensed viewing period, and that's mm-hmm. the big thing. And mm-hmm. I think that this show, because it takes place, really, the first season takes place over a span of about 10 days with some flashbacks. Um, I think that there's a drive to it that people are going to want to watch a lot, hopefully, are going to want to watch a lot of the episodes fairly quickly. And one of the things that Amazon instructed us to do, because this is the first time any of us have done a streaming show, is to really have something at the end of every episode that really makes people want to let that little clock roll out and so they'll start the next episode. Mm-hmm. Um, that was a fun challenge to be, to be given. And I look at the whole thing as being this really interesting challenge. It's, we're given the show, we're given these characters, we're given these great actors. Um, as I said before, a box of things. And, um, <laughs> you know, what, what can we do with that? Right. Um, like an, an example, we didn't know what Vince did. We knew he was a criminal. Mm-hmm. But we know he was threatening to cut off Eddie's finger. So we thought, what occupation would a criminal know where cutting off a finger would be? A, what if he was a card dealer? Okay, what if he's running a card room, a high-stakes card? And it just went from there. So we were given these little wow. clues in the pilot, and we built things from that. And that was really fun to do. Well, we will start to wrap things up here with our very last question, a fun one. Um, hoping to hear from all of you. What is the sneakiest thing that you've ever done? I, uh, a, f- a dear friend of mine was uh, getting married and um, I sent a, and, and he was an actor, uh, that, he's still an actor, that, that I met on a soap opera many, many years ago, 35 years ago. And he was getting married, and of course I was invited, and uh, so I knew all the details of the wedding. And I wrote a fan letter to him <laughs> as some hick from some trailer park somewhere. And I, as uh, someone who is in love, as a female, and I don't want you to marry no woman other than me. You know, you can't do this. Don't do this to me. And I would send one a week. I'm really getting <laughs> wow. upset, John. I'm getting upset. Don't upset me, John. Don't upset me. And I'd send that. I love- and I'd say, God damn you, John. You cannot marry that bitch. I'm going to stop it. I'm going to stop it. By God, I'm going to stop. You know, I'm just, and I just kept getting crazier and crazier. And then I would say, I know you're getting married. And I would put the date. I know this is the church. I'm going to be there. I'm going to stop it. You know, and, oh my, and my friend John came to me. He goes, you got to help me. You got to help me. He says, there's someone. There's, she's, she's crazy. She's crazy. And I'm like, what is she saying? Look at, look at him shaking. He's like, you know, it's in two weeks and she's going to come up and she's, she knows where it is. She knows what time it is. She knows all these things. And I'm going, oh my God, it's like I wrote it myself. Oh. And then he just looked at me. And like, Son of a bitch. You know? <laughs> I, had, I had a thought of letting oh it go. Oh and God. I also had a thought of hiring someone <laughs> to show up, up, to stand across oh, the street. so good. <laughs> Just look. Oh, I wish you And I would then go, oh, John, oh don't look across the street. <laughs> is that her? Do you think, did she ever send you a picture? Is that her? You know, and just freak him out. But then I had second oh thoughts. I said, well, God. it is his wedding. <laughs> and I don't <laughs> like, let's maybe pull it back a little oh, bit. Oh, so, no. That's pretty sneaky. That, that is pretty that's sneaky. wonderful. Anyone else have, have anything? No? No, how could you? I mean, I'm thinking about how I surprised like a friend on his birthday <laughs> in a steam room that's a singing lot happy commitment. birthday. It doesn't really match up to John <laughs> and the wedding, but it was great. Thank you so much Thanks, for joining Brent. us. Thanks, and be man. sure to watch Thank Sneaky so Pete much. on Amazon. Thank you.